Daisy Jameson speaking on Just Transition at the Scott E3 meeting on stopping North Sea oil and gas. Uh, hi, yeah, my name is Daisy, um, and I'm talking today giving like a young person's perspective on Just Transition and relating uh, Just Transition to more general young people's issues, uh, particularly precarity. Um, and I'll also briefly talk about a, like a call for an international Just Transition, because this is something that's been missing. Um, maybe from this talk and often a lot of talks on just transition or quite nationalist, um, focus on Scotland's oil industry, but it'd be great if we could open this up to discussions around the world. So um, I'm just going to introduce myself because I think uh, Mike found it quite interesting like how young people get into climate activism. Um, so, and particularly in just transitions, so uh, I don't come from any fossil fuel background or anything, none of my family works in the fossil fuel industry. Um, but I do come from a working class background. Um, my dad has a ticket inspector, he's just retired um, on the trains and he used to work for the R uh, used to be very involved in the RMT union. Um, my mom has worked various short term um, precarious jobs herself, uh, doing care work, nursery work, um, a lollipop lady, cleaning, and now she's a secretary. So, yeah, I come from a strong working class background. Um, I, I myself have been really fortunate. I've got a scholarship to do a master's degree in environmental change and society um, at Glasgow Uni, which is really, really great. So this has given me a lot of time and a lot of knowledge about environmental issues. Um, so I'm able to come to things like this, which I know normally young people are able to. Um, <coughs> and I've also previously been involved in a handful of different projects. So I previously did a lot of uh, work with food justice, um, combating food banks, or not really combating food banks, but work with food banks, um, work with surplus food redistribution and uh, food that was um, going to be thrown out from supermarkets and what that gets used for, um, and also work on uh, ensuring that a right to food would be um, put into Scottish legislation as well. Um, and I've also done work with uh, rethinking economics and demystifying economics um, to the general public. Um, that was a project that was just finished, unfortunately. That was really interesting. I was working in a community in the east end of Glasgow, um, demystifying economics um, and just making economics accessible because everyone should be able to uh, discuss into economic discussions around economics and just the language is difficult and really hard uh, yeah, to get in. So I think from this, I've kind of got into just transition work. I see everything is quite related. Um, and I do this predominantly with young friends here. Um, and yeah, so far we've been trying to support trade unions, particularly uh, trade unions that are dominated by young people or youth branches of trade unions because they are much bigger than the environmental movement. Um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of a bit about me. Um, but in general, young people's lives today are really defined by precarity and a lack of job prospects. Uh, university is absolutely not the same route in, to employment as it used to be. Um, Though I'm doing masters, people, my friends graduated a year before, um, and they're predominantly doing waitressing, call centre work, care work, and these are really poor contracts, really poor workers' rights. Um, there's a lack of trade union recognition. Uh, though this is changing with unions like Better Than Zero, they're allowing workers to uh, go between different precarious jobs and still remain in Better Than Zero, and there are campaigns like Fair Fringe, which are really great. Um, a lot of these jobs are gig economy jobs and they're really vulnerable to automation as well, um, particularly call centre workers are being outsourced to different countries. A lot of my friends who work in call centres for major banks are very worried about this. Um, yeah, just really, really shoddy contracts. I was talking to my friend, I ran into her on the train the other day. She's just given a new job for a short contract. Uh, she's going to be doing PPI uh, reclaims because there's a deadline coming up for them to be done. Um, and she was told you'd be either working Monday to Friday 9 till 5 or you'll be working three days a week 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. doing reclaims throughout the night. And there's no choice, pretty much everyone's going to be working 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. And it's just expected that young people will be doing this. So yeah, it's really bad. Um, and then through universities as well, through their student recruitment um, and student fairs, they, the, the only secure work that we can see would be like 
within the arms industry, the oil industry, big pharma, banks, or large financial corporations. Yes. There's a massive careers fair going on tomorrow at Glasgow University, and it's dominated by these industries. Um, highly, highly dominated. These are the work we can possibly get that would be secure, but <coughs> young people today are increasingly aware of politics, um, very aware of the world around them. This is not good enough. We don't want this type of work. And yeah, this is like a situation in Glasgow as well, which is a really large city. There are jobs, there is cheap rent, so it's a relatively good place to be a young person as well. Um, yeah, so in this respect, there's a lot of similarities between this and fossil fuel workers, um, particularly the situation in Scotland. So fossil fuel work um, is looking like it's going to be increasingly uh, subjected to automation, cost cutting, a lot of worsening employment conditions. There's increasing use of zero hours contracts, there's temporary work, there's subcontracting, and it's getting precarious of um, the existence of fossil fuel work. And this has been discussed in some of the discussions. Um, and then, but the renewable industry is not looking to provide secure work either, um, such as in BIFAB, um, the work has been outsourced overseas, and this is not providing jobs for people here in Scotland who are highly skilled. Um, there's also a lack of trade union recognition of new, new renewable energies, and this is also not great. Um, and then there's the scandalous instances of them being paid below the minimum wage if you're working, um, this is in the sea change report, we're more than 12 miles out from the UK, you're not subjected to UK employment laws. So there are shocking, really, really low wages, um, £2 something an hour um, for people who are um, decommissioning oil rigs and things. And some similarities could be seen by this list. Young people, you don't get paid the minimum the same minimum wage until you're age 25. If you're below 25, there's a lower minimum wage as well. Um, not so related to fossil fuel work, other just transition things that would be really beneficial for young people would be affordable public transport or free public transport. Um, a return in Glasgow on the bus costs £4.70, and it's, um, I think this is something that shocks people from Edinburgh all the time. Um, Glasgow is a huge city. A large and large amount of people rely on public transport, it's really unwalkable, there's really bad infrastructure for cycling, um, and there's no other real option to get around. Young people can't afford cars, they can't afford the insurance. Um, making sure that there's a warm and secure home, that would really also benefit young people. Young people who live in, uh, often live in overcrowded homes with people that they don't necessarily know, just renting a room. Um, and the housing conditions are really, really shoddy, really terrible, so that would be really great. Um, and just better working conditions, um, yeah, would be really, really amazing. We're going through a mental health crisis right now, uh, people of all ages, but particularly young people as well. Um, this is not being made better by the financial situation, um, constantly being worried about our future, constantly going from short-term contract to short-term contract, unable to find work. Uh, yeah. Um, but I think also as well as this, we need to argue for an international just transition as well, that not only the situation in Scotland is quite poor and could be definitely improved through a just transition internationally, it's really important to recognise that the root of the climate crisis is uh, capitalism and that is and also colonialism and Scotland has a huge, huge part to play to this. Um, there's a theory of carbon capitalism and that we are able to finance a just transition because we have made so much money from burning fossil fuels and other countries around the world have not been given this opportunity to do so. Um, and that's how we're able to fund a just transition and other countries are not. Um, so to kind of rebalance this, we need to talk about redistribution, we need to talk about reparations, um, and we need to provide, talk about providing climate protections based on the country's needs rather than its means. Uh, Scotland is, and the UK is in quite um, a fortunate position in that we don't get hit um, too hard by extreme weather events and other countries do, um, but we have the, the money to protect ourselves a lot better than a lot of other places around the world. Um, 
Yeah, a coordinated transition to renewable energy also geographically makes sense. Uh, in the global north, we could have lots of wind turbines and tidal energy that really suits our climate. Whereas in the global south uh, or in the near the equator, solar panels uh, would be more beneficial. If we redistribute the energy, um, it, would, it would be more efficient. Um, yeah, we also need to fight for trade union recognition in countries in the global south as well, uh, particularly with the minerals required for renewables. A lot of the renewable energies require um, minerals uh, which are rare and hard to find and this causes a huge amount of conflict around the world. Um, so we need to secure workers' rights for everyone so that exploitation that's taken place here through the lack of protected jobs here is not moved to the global south. Uh, yeah, this could be done through public procurement contracts having human rights and trying throughout the supply chain and not only just supply um, and trying to hear. Yeah, um, I think us reducing carbon rapidly would show a huge amount of solidarity with the global working class um, in that the working class and we all know that the people who have the least amount of money and the least amount of resources suffer the most from climate change and less able to protect themselves. So as a global working class we should work together, we should reduce our carbon rapidly, yeah, to, to show solidarity and to do our part because we have, um, and take responsibility because we have made much of this ecological breakdown ourselves. Um, yeah, uh, I guess to conclude, I think that the Just Transition is a very exciting movement. Um, workers, environmentalists <coughs> together, particularly relating to young people, makes a very, very strong movement. Um, it's a really hopeful future to work towards and it's a really great way to like, group together many inequalities and many problems at once and try and, try and solve them under one strategy.